Holly Lee is a homeschooling mother of three who operates My Little Brick Schoolhouse, a blog offering homeschooling support and academic resources, and especially book lists. A graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, an educator who served four years in Durham and Wake County's public schools, and now a Charlotte Mason and classical homeschool enthusiast, Holly lives in Wilson, North Carolina with her husband and rambunctious redheads. In today's special installment in the Advent audio blog series, Holly is here to talk to us about including Advent and Christmas into our morning time, and you know that is a topic we love to discuss around here. Holly has some great resources and encouragement for us today, so definitely listen to her episode and check the show notes for links to her resources. And for more holiday homeschool resources, head to humilityanddoxology.com slash advent. Enjoying Advent Morning Time by Holly Lee Advent. This is the time we start pursuing more sacred moments with family as we wait on the Savior to come down to us, as he did over 2,000 years ago. For my family, homeschooling rhythms start to shift in early December. More Christmas read-alouds, more family events, festivities in our community, and travel all start vying for our time and attention. How do we experience a special new rhythm without overcommitting ourselves? I think this has been the question of the modern-day mom for a while now. Homeschooling moms are not the exception, but we do have some autonomy when it comes to setting a family schedule. There are so many good things to enjoy in a homeschool around Christmas time. Whether we pause independent studies for the month of December or choose to do school until right before Christmas, there is a longing for feasting. And it might not look like literal feasting during the entire Advent season, but we are feasting in other ways. Early 20th century education reformer Charlotte Mason emphasized the importance of making available an abundance of ideas for children. As a parent and homeschool teacher, I truly believe one of the best ways to spread this feast of ideas in front of our children is through a practice we call morning time. I've been practicing some form of morning time with my kids since they were toddlers. Now we have a house of three spirited children ranging in ages from three to eight years. So why try morning time? My answer is why would you ever consider missing out on a morning time? Many homeschooling families who have practiced morning time for years may not have started using the term morning time until recently, even though they have been doing it all along. First, let's define our terms. Cindy Rollins is an author, speaker, and homeschool mom to nine grown children. She popularized the term morning time in her book, Morning Time, A Liturgy of Love. Cindy Rollins once said, what is morning time? It is capturing the hours of your day before they flit away. It is making sure the most beautiful things happen first. It is impossible to regret that. When I plan out a school year, I allot time for the feast as found in a morning time or afternoon tea time, which is separate from the block of time dedicated to independent studies like math, phonics instruction, spelling, copywork, writing and rhetoric, etc. When I define morning time, I try to take into consideration the mom who cannot fit a morning time into her literal morning and prefers to enjoy the time during the afternoon hours instead. I see you moms of preschool drop off and pick up. I also see you moms who begin the homeschool day a little later in the morning. Oh, how each new year takes on a different rhythm with different responsibilities and time constraints. For example, last year, our morning time was actually first thing in the morning at the breakfast table. Our morning time was actually broken into two separate segments on either side of breakfast. I'll explain. Morning time part one opened with all of us singing the doxology, a hymn, and saying a prayer together. Then we ate breakfast and cleaned up. Morning time part two happened in the living room, where we could all spread out. The weekly rotation consisted of joke book readings, picture study from ancient Egypt and then later Michelangelo, composer study from Bach, and poetry from assorted poets. Then we would fit in a short math mini lesson from bedtime math or read aloud, followed by our ancient times reading and narration from the story of the world. Morning time used to take about an hour each morning. Not everyone was present all the time either. 
I'm being real here. I had a helper in the home who sometimes took my youngest child up to play during morning time part two. I have so many sweet memories from last year's morning time. This year looks a bit different. Since we start so early in the morning, out of necessity, like 8 a.m., we have chosen to concentrate on our independent studies first thing in the morning. The morning time we used to relish in the literal morning hours has now been moved to after lunch, which is another anchor of our day. I like to call this our tea time instead of morning time. Sometimes it takes on the name of reading club, depending on what is being emphasized that week. The beauty of this is we have built in time to gather and read poetry, read about history, enjoy our new composer, Beethoven, and do picture study. This works for us too. Even though it's not perfect, it does make those afternoons a little more productive than they would be otherwise. So morning time does not have to happen first thing in the morning. It can happen right after breakfast or after some independent study subjects or even after lunch. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't happen because our days are not all going to look the exact same. During Advent, we still attend full school days up until my youngest son is released for Christmas break from his preschool. That way, we make the most efficient use of our days without our little guy, as much as we love him. However, starting around the third week in December, we take a more relaxed school schedule. This is when we start our Advent morning time, followed by just two subjects, math and reading, really quick, quick lessons. How do you decide when to start Advent morning time? Could you start when the season of Advent begins in late November? Absolutely. If you have a built-in morning time already, you can surely substitute those plans for Advent morning time plans and carry on with your independent studies until you need to break from school completely. Other than the fact that I need my schedule to mimic my preschooler's schedule, I also have a husband who works up until a couple days before Christmas Day, taking minimal time off between Christmas and New Year's Day. This is why we usually begin an Advent morning time closer to Christmas Day. Morning time can be enjoyed by everyone, from the littlest to the oldest member in our family. But if I'm being honest, Daddy is rarely there to enjoy Advent morning time because of work. So I see you too, wives of small business owners. Before you decide when to start your Advent morning time, I'd invite you to consider the things that matter most to you and your family during this season. So right now, would you please pause this audio to write down three things that matter to you during this season of Advent. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Now, now can you please write down three times of day you enjoy gathering with your children? Now that you have an idea of what matters most and when you are available during the day to gather, let's talk Advent morning time. Have you ever been perusing Pinterest for Advent devotionals only to find that they are all very time specific and unforgiving when it comes to missing a day here and there? There is so much material out on the internet. I get overwhelmed just by thinking about the many times I set out to begin an Advent devotional only to find out that we simply could not finish it in time. How stressful, right? Instead of letting the devotional dictate your family's schedule, I invite you to tell your devotional where it needs to go into your daily rhythm. Wanting a feast of ideas? Look back to that list you made about things that matter. What's on the list? Do you have read alouds? How about Bible reading? Good music or art or hymns? Maybe a Christmas themed poem to memorize as a family or a nature walk you'd love to take in the crisp air. This is where you define your boundaries for your Advent morning time. Make a list of your top three to four priorities for this time. Which subjects can you not live without? And I'm talking to you, Mama, because it needs to be enjoyable for you. And that outflow of energy and joy will impact your kiddos. Next, you have permission to peruse Pinterest or look into a specific Advent devotional. Inspiration gathering is overwhelming sometimes, but it does provide a glimpse into what you are wanting to do and it can offer some direction. So go ahead and do it. We usually start the day with a devotional. So I prioritize devotionals into our morning time. Right now we're using our 24 Family Ways by Sally and Clay Clarkson. Daddy leads it before he goes to work. 
I want to continue this through our Advent season, at least on the days when we are not visiting family or have an overpacked day. Then we say goodbye to Daddy as he goes to work. The kids and I really enjoy starting our Advent morning time with a hymn after the devotional. Last year, we enjoyed Joy to the World, O Come All You Faithful, Silent Night, Holy Night, and What Child Is This? Following the hymn, we read a passage of scripture. I have selected special passages that point to Messiah Jesus, focusing on prophecy, his suffering, his resurrection, and the restoration of all things in his second coming. After scripture reading, we are ready to use a different part of our brains, so we begin our poetry reading. We focus on recitation, but also copy down keywords and lines from the poem we want to remember. By the end of the Advent season, we are able to transcribe these key words and lines from the poem and recite the entire thing. But it's not full of pressure. It's just for fun, and it's a good exercise to put some great things into your children's minds and your own mind, Mama. I have three favorite poems I use in my own Advent morning time, rotating them yearly. Poetry is followed by composer study. We loved watching the YouTube videos of classical kids Mr. Bach comes to call last year. My kids loved drawing Bach to narrate what they learned. After composer study, we are seriously ready to move around and go for a nature walk. We bring treasures home, which we'll observe over the Advent season. Nature notebooks and colored pencils add to our nature walks and sometimes watercolor. Be sure to visit that favorite tree you've been eyeing over the autumn season. Lastly, with our minds and bodies exercised and fed, we begin to settle in for our Christmas picture book. I read aloud a selected favorite and ask a narration question afterwards. We have some favorites, which I'm happy to share with you for your planning. Some of them include The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey by Susan Wojcikowski, Great Joy by Kate DiCamillo, An Orange for Frankie by Patricia Polacco, St. Nicholas the Gift Giver by Ned Bustard, The Legend of the Candy Cane by Lori Wahlberg. My Advent time is so simple, guys. I use this morning time I call it a joyful feast. It's a four-day study for my own family that uses Charlotte Mason's principles. We connect and we're refreshed together. Our hearts are pointed to Christ. And what's freeing about it is the four days are self-paced. So you can choose to spread a so-called whole day of the feast over the course of a whole week if that works better for your family. And it's great, I would see non-homeschool families loving this resource to bond over break. It can be used during morning time, of course, or it can also be used during Christmas school if you plan to spread an entire day of the feast over the course of a school day if you're not doing your independent studies. So it's not meant to stress us out. It's just worked in organically into our rhythm that we would have anyway. So. We've talked about deciding what matters. We've gathered inspiration. Next is time to gather resources. I think we touched on that a bit, but if I would offer any advice about this, I'd say, first, shop your home. You never know what read aloud chapter book or picture book will stand out to you as that perfect book you never had time for before now. Next, look at your library for books and make sure you check out my book lists on my Little Brick Schoolhouse website under the book lists tab. Finally, if there are any gaps, Amazon Prime offers two-day shipping. That's always an option. After you've gathered your resources, make sure you organize what you gathered. I have a morning time box I keep on a window seat by the kitchen table. How about your computer? So many resources I pull for Advent morning time are digital these days. Keep a folder on your desktop for any PDF downloads. For links and internet pages, I'd place these in a folder for your bookmarked pages at the top of your internet browser's homepage. Or you might want to use a document that can be stored in Google Drive and can be edited and revised every year. But make sure you document. This way you won't have to reinvent the wheel next year. I know you've thought about organizing your day too. There are limited hours in a day, as we busy moms all know. Make sure you're being realistic when you plan what time of day you'll have your Advent morning time. 
If possible, make it no more than an hour and a half. With my three young elementary-aged kids, I have factored in the nature walk, which will probably take a good half hour. So be realistic here. Most importantly, guys, enjoy your time. If something you planned is not working well for your family, nobody's telling you that you have to do it. No regrets. Just move on to something that does work. If you have to simplify, simplify and cool it down. I imagine that a goal of your Advent morning time is to relish the time being pointed to Jesus with your children. If there is an element you do not get to during your Advent morning time, why not move it to bedtime? The read aloud would be a great example of something that can be easily moved to another anchor of the day, like dinner time or bedtime. How about involving dad in that time? Lastly, I want you to focus on three words that you want to embody as mom during the Advent season. Go ahead and write those three words down. Possibly patience, joy, a smiling face. Go ahead. Think about it. Next, ask God to give you the wisdom to know what kind of atmosphere he desires for you and your home. Karen Andriola, in her book Mother Culture for a Happy Homeschool, defines mother culture as the skillful art with which a mother looks after the ways of her household and herself. In her home, she creates a culture all her own with a mingling of love and responsibility. A mother does a lot of taking care so she also takes care of herself. I hope you make time during Advent to do something life-giving for you and your home. Factor in a time for your own reading or listening. Yes, the laundry is always going to be there, but maybe you could pair that task with something like a favorite podcast or audiobook. Or how about take a walk outside in the fresh air, alone or with your kids? Come back to your family refreshed to tell them what you learned and what you saw. Or worship songs while you get ready for the day. Singing those songs as a family can make a great memory. So friends, whether you're going to be enjoying an extended Advent morning time or a shorter one, I pray you find the hope that we all have in a Savior, Jesus Christ. Enjoy the ideas that point us to this hope of new beginnings, of incarnation and compassion, and of the resurrection and forgiveness of sins, and of a day that is to come, his second coming and restoration of the world to be what it was intended to be, perfect. Oh, by the way, your Advent morning time, <laughs> it's not going to be perfect, but it will be an offering to Christ. It will be the loaves and fish that only he can multiply. And it will be a way to create lasting memories with your dearest ones. May God bless you fully and give your family ways to take your Advent morning time to a watching world that needs to hear the hope of Jesus. Maybe it will look like a neighborhood Advent morning time with the kids on your street. Or maybe it will be another ministry opportunity in your own home. However it may look, may it be something you can hold and something you can share love to you all this season. Thank you to this week's special audio blog guest. Be sure to check the show notes to find out more about this week's guest and where you can find all the resources discussed in this episode. And would you take a moment to leave a rating and review and to subscribe to the Homeschool Conversations with Humility and Doxology podcast? You can do that right here, wherever you're listening to your podcast. It really is a great way to let other homeschool families find the homeschooling encouragement that you get delivered straight to your ear buds each week. I am busy recording more scintillating podcast content for you for the future season, but for now, make sure you don't miss a single bonus episode. Until next time, my friends.